The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What is up, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very excited to get back to you guys. I know we've been off for a little bit here. It seems like we always take these short breaks here and there, but uh, just schedules aligning. But we're coming at you with a full slate, uh, even though it's college football season, the, the college football season is over. We still got a lot to get to when it comes to college football season. We're going to talk about the committee and whether they got it right, whether FSU got screwed out of the playoffs. We're going to talk a little bit about that because we haven't been able to talk about it as a podcast here on Rising to the Occasion. Uh, and we're also going to talk about the transfer portal chaos all kinds of things going on in the transfer portal and it has been absolutely hectic uh, this year and then we're going to get to a lot more in the college football realm uh, as, lo- as well as John Ra- John Ram uh, going over from the PGA over to live so he's gone and joined the dark side there we're going to talk about that uh, and we're going to get to some other uh, news here on the slate as well but first before we get started let me first bring in my co-host jeremy jeremy how you doing man i'm doing pretty good and the same thing it's been it feels like it's been forever but obviously these schedules has been chaotic for all of us but i mean i'm just glad we're here to get an episode out to you guys but yeah we got a really good lineup for you guys tonight the just some of the stuff that we're going to talk about like for the transfer portal i know we're not going to get to everything but there's just been so much stuff going on in the transfer portal it's been absolutely mind-boggling here and I, yeah, you guys need to stick around. Then um, I, talking like Josh mentioned, talking about the college committee going into the playoffs. I I don't want to jump too far, but I don't think Florida State got the right full decision for what they did. But I'm going to cut the chit chat here just because I know guys like it. Josh said we got a lot to get to in, in a short amount of time. So Josh, I'm going to cut the chit chat. And let's get rolling with it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, looking at everything too. I mean, it's just crazy how much news has happened in college football and like i said and like i said it's it's the end of the season too but before we get too far into it i first want to mention our first sponsor for today and that is big frig big frig is an amazing product we tell you guys this all the time we talk about big frig and every time and as always i'm going to do it again uh we show you show off our big frig tumblers uh they made these special for us too if i can get it without a glare which isn't going to happen but they made some logos on them for us amazing tumblers Uh, i put my coffee in it in the mornings uh I put it water in it uh, to keep it cold. No matter what I'm using it for, it does its purpose absolutely perfectly. And I couldn't expect it to do any more than what it does. Big Frig makes the most amazing tumblers. But on top of that, they also make the most amazing coolers. You can go to bigfrig.com and check out their array of coolers and tumblers. They've got so much over there. They've even got some gear if you just want to rep their brand because they have an awesome brand. So you can go check them out at bigfrig.com. That is B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And just for being our listeners, we've teamed up with them to give you guys an amazing deal. You can get 20% off by using code RISING220. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0. You put that code in and get yourself 20% off. Guys, this is a product that is very comparable with all of the top brands, but you're getting it at a better price. And on top of that, we're giving you 20% off. So go check out Big Frig uh, and and check them out. They're amazing products, tumblers and coolers. Go check them all out there. And again, using that code that's at the bottom of the screen right now, rising to 20, you can get yourself 20% off. Jeremy, Big Frig is amazing, right? You will not be disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. Big Freak <laughs> is phenomenal, guys. Seriously, guys, go check out Big Freak. Then we love Big Freak so much, and we're blessed to be able to be partnered with Big Freak and Brock. And we're just thankful that he got the we got the opportunity to be with them. But Josh, as much as we would love to talk about Big Freak here. Let's get rolling into these sports because we got a lot to talk about here. Yeah, yeah, and we're trying to cram this in because we're recording this on Thursday, and we're also doing belly up uh, after dark here. So it's the first coming out, I guess, coming back party of belly up after dark. So if you're watching this, it's already aired, but you can go back and rewatch it. We're going to talk about some topics that are still relevant today. So go check that out over on belly up sports YouTube page. Uh, And as always too, guys, if you would go over to social media and follow us, we actually added that up here in the top left. You can barely see that up there. It's kind of small, but let you guys know where to find us on social media. And you can also find that uh, down in the description down below as well. But let's start off by talking about the committee room and kind of diving in so, Jeremy, first to start off, we, we take a look back uh, and, and think about what the committee had to decide. They had to decide, of course, uh, an undefeated Michigan and an undefeated uh, Washington, Washington, both conference champions. Yep. I think it's obvious they had to get in. There was no doubt upon that. But then when Alabama beat Georgia, this is where the chaos begins. Mm-hmm. 
we have Alabama beat Georgia. So now the number one team has a loss and they're not the conference champion. Right. We have a number, uh, a, a one loss team now become a conference champion. And then of course, Texas who beat Texas, uh, who beat Alabama earlier on in the season by double digits. They're now a conference champion mm-hmm. in the big 12 with one loss. And so now you've got two one loss teams that really seem like they ought to deserve. They, they really deserve to be in. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, Georgia, you can't really knock them out of the top four. No, <laughs> But you're talking about three teams, and then you add in another conference champion who's undefeated in Florida State, and you have to decide who the four best teams are. And also, you know, something that the committee's shown before is that they also like to go to the most deserving teams. We see that with Cincinnati putting them in because, hey, UCF had two seasons in a row where UCF, uh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, even talk, to, um, talk about them, where UCF should have possibly been considered and mm-hmm. wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then... Now Cincinnati goes undefeated in that same conference. They get in, and they put up a good fight against Alabama. Mm-hmm. TCU, very deserving to get in last year, and they showed that they they deserved it. I don't I don't like the the comparison that TCU is the reason why Florida State didn't get in because we we do remember that nobody picked TCU to win against Michigan. It's just irrelevant. Yet they still beat Michigan. Mm-hmm. So uh, looking at this, I, I I look at this. Did FSU get screwed? And and if you're the committee, who is your top four? Who are you actually putting in? Dude, just talking about this playoff picture in general, it was so hard just because we even when we talked about it last time, we spent just so much time just like who do we think should belong in these college playoffs? Like we we talked about the winner of Alabama and Georgia. That one was pretty locked in. We talked about Michigan and Iowa. That was pretty locked in. The score for the Iowa Michigan game. I never thought I'd ever pick the under in that situation, but I was wrong. Um, the Texas game that was that was probably really exciting for you to see Texas blow out Oklahoma State, and the Washington game that was another really really great matchup, like we obviously expected it to be. But my honest opinion, I like I said, guys, I didn't want to jump the gun here. I think Florida State should have made it in just because and i don't think you're alone at all yeah there's probably a lot of people that have thought florida state with what they've what they've came through all the all the duration that they went through this entire year i understand that they went undefeated but still you look at this team and you can't tell me that with how hard and nothing against any of the teams that didn't make it in or didn't get the opportunity to make it in every team it just it seemed like especially this year with everything that's going to be completely different next year it seemed like this was the best football college football wise we've seen in a long time in my personal opinion but i think with florida state i think they sincerely should have got a shot and I know you, uh, everybody's probably seen the videos of Florida State all in the team in the team meeting room, just watching the selection committee pick the teams. And obviously, once they got the call saying that they're not being selected, you saw everyone's faces. Everyone was really, really disapp- disappointed and depressed. And I, I, I sincerely don't blame them. So, but, so I mean, uh, you know, like it's it's really hard. Like I said, I think you can make an argument because there's really six teams yeah. that deserve to be there. But but, but the, they're they're trying to pick the four best teams. That's mm-hmm. always been their their motto. I don't think they're always right. they're always consistent. consistent yeah, yeah, no, they're definitely not always right. And yeah. I don't think they're right here. I think the only right move would have been putting six teams in there. Absolutely, and saying, you know what, this year we're we're making some moves, we're spending some money, we're making six six slots in that, and that's I mean, that's the only way to really make it right. Absolutely, I mean, I, I already know they talked about trying to change the the playoff format for how many teams will come. Twelve in. teams yeah. next year, and and I, I'm I'm okay with that because now we don't have this anymore. Exactly. But so I, I guess the the question is, who do you put in as your top four? If it's not Texas and Alabama, who is that fourth slot? Because you think. Uh, Washington, Washington Michigan, Michigan, and Florida State are locked in, which mm-hmm. I agree. I think if you win your conference championship, I don't know how you, in in this format, how you don't get a chance mm-hmm. to go, and especially as an undefeated mm-hmm. conference championship. Absolutely. I mean, if I had to pick my fourth team, uh, this is <laughs> it's super. It's tough, so isn't it? hard. I'm still sticking with my gut here. I I want to stay Florida State. Well, but, but Florida, Florida, Florida State's in it. So who's the okay. fourth? We've got three. <laughs> You've got Texas, Alabama, and Georgia. You know, Texas beat Alabama. Alabama beat Georgia. So do you do you put Texas in there? 
because now you have to also think you're leaving out the SEC, SEC yeah. which let's not let's not forget that Alabama Georgia game. Both of both those, those teams were so equal, mm-hmm. and that was definitely a number one team against the number two team. Oh yeah, absolutely, but. fighting it out. So who do you choose? This is where this is one of those situations where I just want to have a big wheel and just spin the wheel and yeah, just say yeah, who gets it. It, it really is a coin flip. I mean, <laughs> because it's not the same Alabama team that we no, saw against Texas. No, no. And and personally, I've already made my prediction on on the Belly Up uh, YouTube page mm-hmm. and talking about talking about this situation. Right. I, I personally think it's going to come down to Texas Alabama and the national championship game. Yeah. And I think Alabama wins because I just don't think it's the same team. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I could see I could see the argument for putting either Alabama up because they're a different team and because they look tougher. And really that's all this is is speculation. I just think it's crappy saying that Florida state doesn't deserve to get in because we don't think they would beat uh, Alabama, Texas, Washington, or Michigan Uh, because that's, that's a whole nother ballpark. We didn't, Blake and I sat here on Saturday morning conference championship uh, weekend. And we said, we don't think Alabama will beat Georgia. And guess what? We were barely wrong. And so, who's to say that we, we we're all picking against Florida State, and if they don't they don't completely flip the script? Uh, and then again, you know, looking at last year, nobody picked TCU to beat Michigan. But what did TCU do? They they shocked the world and beat Michigan. They made it to the the national championship. And yeah, they got blown out in the national championship, but they still made their way there to the team that everyone was saying deserved to be in the national championship. So it's it's just all a moot point, but. Alabama and FSU. Let's kind of compare these two. Okay. Uh, we've got Alabama and Florida State, both undefeated. Okay. Or uh, I'm sorry, they're they're both undefeated, undefeated in their in conference, conference and a conference champion. So that's one thing that they're they're both similar on. And strength of record, Alabama's fourth, uh, and uh, I don't have the FSU uh, strength of, strength of record here, but it's very far down the line. I can't remember exactly what it was now because I don't have it uh, right. written down properly. I put right. third, but that was not the case. Uh, the strength of schedule uh, was uh, Alabama was fifth. And okay, th- this is where I, I'm messing myself up. So the strength of s- schedule, Alabama was fifth and Florida State was 55th. So that's a huge difference. Wow. Now the strength of record, Alabama was fourth and FSU was third. So that's that's just how close these teams are. But then you look at it and that kind of puts it into perspective where we can understand the committee making the decision to put Alabama up, up above Florida, Florida State. State. And and honestly, like I said, I don't think there really is a fair but, way. No. You have to add all six. That's yeah, the only absolutely. way. Because okay. you've got six deserving teams. Oh, absolutely. Like like I was telling you about earlier, they're changing everything for next year. I'm I'm sincerely surprised they didn't throw a little bit of a roll in the dice situation here and just have all six teams here. Just flat out say, have at it. Well, and, and what's to keep you from saying, you know what? We're just going to say the number one, one and two teams, Michigan and have Washington, they have a bye week mm-hmm. because we we absolutely knew that they were going to make it no matter how the situation were to to come. So how about we just say, you know what? We're making we're gonna we're gonna make the biggest news ever. We are changing the college football playoffs mm-hmm. as it stands right now. Right now. <laughs> and, and just say number one and two, you guys get a bye. We're going to play the four-team playoff between these other four teams that we think deserve it, and the winners go up to play the next week. They're going to play the number one and two seed. We need and to, now we have our four four-team playoff. We need to get a hold of the college committee. We need well, to get and, and more we on. talked about it last year. I guess you weren't with the podcast yeah, I wasn't yet last when year, yeah. when we went through all of this. But Blake and I we, we flat out said the only real way to to solve this committee issue is putting us as rising to the occasion. Uh, we even threw in a couple of other names. I think Josh Pate would make that list. Uh, you know, the the Crane brothers and, and then David Cohn. So over there, the Crane and Company guys, mm-hmm. uh, add them in with us because we love them and we want to share the love with them. So we, we'll make our own committee. Uh, and, and that's how we're going to do this. We're going to make our own committee and it's going to be full of people that actually know what they're talking about. Because if we were the committee, that's what we would have done. Oh, absolutely. Open 100%. it up to all six teams because there is no way to pick the correct way. Absolutely. <laughs> it just I mean, it just doesn't happen. I know this is like you said, we're at, we're at the tail end of college football here. We we want to see more college football, even though this is at the tail end of college football. So seriously, let everybody at it. Just because like you said, this is the last year before everything completely flips the script. You might have to scramble for scheduling purposes and, mm-hmm. and figuring out the venues, but it's not going to be an issue because you are so powerful when it comes to the sporting world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it sucks. And, and you know, I feel for FSU. One thing 
uh, a huge shout out to Mike Norvell and the way that he responded and trying to rally to rally his team together. Mm-hmm. Hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, and what I really hope happens is that FSU goes and beats Georgia just to prove this oh, committee was wrong. I hope so. Uh, and and you know how how sweet that would be for Florida State fans, but also at the same time so frustrating. And that, if that does happen, do you now have a, a UCF moment where in, back in 2017 UCF beat Auburn, who beat Alabama, who won the national championship game, and they claim a national championship and even have a parade and everything? <laughs> is that what FSU does? I mean, there's a po- there's a high possibility <laughs> at this rate. I say I mean- do it. Well, bring Diopolis. that, bring that Orlando, that Orlando, uh, you know, magic. Th- th- yeah. The magic, you know, bring that kind of atmosphere up to Tallahassee mm-hmm. and, and do it there. But man, let's jump over to the transfer portal because the transfer portal, as we mentioned, very crazy, super hectic, uh, college football players, uh, the, the, their winter transfer port- portal window is now open. Uh, and they have until January 2nd to enter their names into the portal. That doesn't mean that they have to choose their schools by then. Um, or if they can even return to their schools, previous schools, but they have 30 days to decide whether they're going to be in the portal. Uh, and so they have an, an opportunity to enter their name into this transfer portal. Uh, and it's really just an online database that kind of puts all of these players together so that teams can go and try to recruit from them. And Jeremy, with this year's transfer portal, it has been sus- substantially bigger than ever. Uh, there was 1,184 players that officially enter- entered the transfer portal on the opening day on Monday. That is absolutely absurd, and I think it was something like 800, uh, close, close, or maybe it was 400 more players this year than it was last year. Uh, I mean, there was just so many. So, I mean, we're talking uh, close to 3,000 pl- college football players entering their names into the transfer portal as of today. Yeah, That's just absolutely insane. That's got to be a record. It, it it is it is the highest it's ever been. I mean, if you if you don't say that's a record, you're you're delusional. But I mean, no, like talking about all the craziness that the transfer portal has brought us. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna throw out one in particular because Josh sent this message out to us earlier in the week. Dylan Gabriel going up to duck country possibly possibly yeah i mean it's, it's very mean, possible it, he's having a visit up there and i just think it fits I, if you get dylan gabriel up in oregon one he's already got the swag just to let <laughs> yeah or, he does just to, just that's already sticks alone two all this um all the bling that oregon does whether it's jerseys merchandise anything along those lines oregon I love you guys. I've I've always had a I've always had a soft spot in my heart for you guys. I think there. everyone does. Oh yeah, absolutely. everyone just loves the cool uniforms, Dude, the swag. If 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 I ever get the opportunity to go up to up to Oregon, Blake beat me to it. I was I was I'm not gonna lie. I was flat out jealous because I've always wanted to go to Eugene, and. Well, and you know what? Now, you know, when you, when you talk about Blake, he went up to, to Oregon. Uh, and the reason why he went up to Oregon was to go watch his his QB that transferred up there. And that was kind of a big part of it. Uh, yeah. Eugene was on his bucket list. That was the main part. Um, but, you know, he got to go see Bo Nix. And that was a big thing for him. Mm-hmm. Who's to say, you know, I don't, I don't follow up my, my transferred quarterback and go watch uh, Dylan Gabriel if he goes there. So I think that'd be a lot of fun. But, you know, a few other quarterbacks. Uh, the quarterbacks are just crazy. Um, because this, this is just a few of them just to name off. Uh, you got Ohio State states kyle mccord possibly going to nebraska how about that um but uh and that would be a very big move for nebraska to get him uh washington state's cam ward uh duke's riley leonard who possibly could be going to Notre dame i hear uh oregon state's dj uyunglele uh, and then ucla's dante moore just all kinds of big time quarterbacks entering in. and then there's even more uh I, I saw will rogers uh man i forget where i th- where i saw that he might be going to um, but it was a it was a big big time move for him too, and I can't remember. Uh, I, I think Will was Rogers he, to Washington possibly. I was say, was that was UCLA, that was the possibility. Washington, yeah, that was the possibility that I saw, and so that was just crazy to me because now you you're you're losing Michael Penix after this year mm-hmm. to bring in Will Rogers, who you know has had an injury bug, but wants one more season to play. Goes into the transfer portal as a, a grad transfer. Uh, if he goes up to Washington, I think that could be That's really big for be them. Scary for them, Josh. I want to ask you this: if uh, if Kyle McCord does go to the University of Nebraska, what do you think it's going to be like down in Lincoln? 
you know, I, I look at Kyle McCord and I talked to my dad about this because because that's why I want to ask you because I know you probably yeah. talked to your dad about yeah, it. And so, you know, and I, I threw that name out there. He said, oh, you're delusional. And then <laughs> within within 30 minutes, it, it popped it up popped on his up. his timeline that, hey, there's this new article that just came out an hour ago. And it's talking about Kyle McCord ha- has a uh, visit with with the uh, 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 offensive, offensive coordinator, coordinator. there of, of Nebraska Satterfield. Uh, and so he, and my dad was like, wow, you, you were right. And I was like, I mean, it just makes sense. Stay in the Big Ten. They need a quarterback. Why not go after one of the guys that almost won the Big Ten? Uh, and so looking at Kyle McCord, I think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great quarterback. And so that's the one thing I'm a little skeptical about him. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think he's got a clutch gene in him because we saw that in Notre Dame. We saw that really towards the end there with Michigan. He really puts together some good drives in crunch time. Uh, and then even that last drive, it, it felt like Ohio State was going to come back to do something to tie the game up, yeah. possibly go in the, with the lead. Uh, and it was really just an interception by Kyle McCord that was really forced off of a sack, uh, at least an incoming sack. But talking about Kyle McCord, OSU players trans- enter into the transfer portal. Currently, there's 13 players, including Kyle McCord, Julian Fleming, and Chip Trana, uh, three big-time players wow. for them. Uh, and so, I mean, looking at Ohio State, they're losing 13 players. Uh, and then, you know, you're also talking about Mayan Williams, who's declared for the draft, and Marvin, Marvin Harrison, Harrison Jr., Jr., who possibly could be entering into the draft. He still hasn't made his decision. Uh, he did speak out about that and saying that it would be much sweeter. He would rather take a win over the team up north than you know being drafted high. And so right. it's crazy to think, but they're going to be a completely new team next year, which good and bad comes from it. But man, I just I'm looking at the entirety of the transfer portal. Do you think that with all of these players transferring this crazy, does it ruin the game of football, college football for you a little bit? Because it just turns it into something similar to the NFL where it's just free agency. A part of me wants to say yes. And a part of me wants to sincerely say no, just because, but the part of me that wants to say yes is because like you said, the best you get these big blockbuster monumental trades or anything along those lines, it can make your season or can, can sincerely break your season. Like, Look at some of the teams now, like um, CJ Stroud over with Carolina. I know he's had right, with, or, with uh, uh, um, Houston. With Houston, yeah, you're yeah, getting him and Bryce mixed up. I, I always get that mixed up. Um, it it hasn't been like what they wanted it to be, mm-hmm. and I understand people are just saying it's his rookie year. This is this is his learning step, but I, I understand. There's so much talk about him in college. Now, obviously, stepping up to the big leagues, this is, like I said, a whole coin flip. Well, and, and all of a sudden, he turned on the Jets here yeah. recently, which is really crazy to see because I guess I think if you back up to Justin Fields or even before him, Braxton or, Miller or uh, and Cordell Jones uh, and, and looking at these other Ohio State quarterbacks, Ohio State quarterbacks just never really performed. That but now true. you see uh, kind of a change there with C.J. Stroud. That is true. But, but I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I think it's just crazy to see how much different Ohio State's going to look, oh, mainly because of the transfer portal. Uh, and I think a lot of people do hate that because you don't have the sense of sticking with your team. I think there's a difference between a guy who realizes he's in a bad situation mm-hmm. and gets out, like Bo Nix, for example, yeah. uh, very recent, or even Cam Newton gets himself into trouble with with the uh, team he's with and mo- moves out, uh, goes to Auburn, ends up winning a Heisman and winning a national championship. Uh, with them. So, you know, you, you see that with different guys or even Baker Mayfield in a bad situation moves out and, and finds himself in a better situation or even a grad transfer. A lot of people can understand that with Jalen Hurts. He mm-hmm. just needs one more season. He knows he's not going to get it with, with Alabama. He leaves on good terms and goes to Oklahoma, has a great season, right. gets drafted. So, I mean, th- there's a good and a bad to the transfer portal, but with, t- with guys, young guys and veteran, veteran guys, guys, all yeah. just going in Willy nilly, uh, it it does create a lot of chaos, and I think NIL even adds to that frustration yeah. with the players getting paid. Uh, and so, you know, it it adds frustration a lot throughout the the realm of college football. But uh, guys, it's going to be a crazy one to look through the 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 entirety of the transfer portal and seeing where everybody lands. There's a lot of speculation with a lot of these players, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have to keep an eye on all of it uh, and keep up with it with, with you guys as it goes on. Uh, we've had a few commitments, but not really enough to really make too much of a fuss about it right now. So we're going to keep our eye on the transfer portal, but let's get to Oklahoma, Texas. A little bit of news here comes from Oklahoma, Texas. We know that they're going over to the sec, but now uh, there's some news about this rivalry. 
it's going to be staying in the Cotton Bowl there in Dallas. Uh, the, both teams have agreed to extend their their game in the Cotton Bowl through 2036, so 2036. And as a part of this deal, the city of Dallas has agreed to an estimated $140 million to renovations to that stadium, which is really big. Uh, and it, it really needs a lot of updates, too, uh, from what I've heard. I've st- st- I really want to get there before they make the renovations so I can see the difference and everything. But uh, the stadium opened in 1930. The Sooners and Longhorns first met at a neutral site at the fairgrounds in 1929, a year before. Uh, and so the, and they've played a game there in the Cotton Bowl ever since it opened in 1930. So every year it's been there. This is a historic place. And then adding to it, it's in the state fairgrounds the weekend of the state fair. Jeremy, I mean, how how huge is this for just the rivalry, knowing how much goes into just the atmosphere? Split it down the middle, half crimson, half burnt orange, and also you're surrounded by the State Fair. Dude, I mean, the the Cotton Bowl, the the history of the Cotton Bowl is already one to, that you can just list off, go and talk about for, for forever. But I'm I'm really glad to see that they're continuing this to go on just because I feel like if they were to break this up, I feel like a lot of people would really be upset just because we've seen this go for so, so long. And then you finally were to break the break the committee and just say we're done with it. But no, there's a lot of people like I know, Josh, you probably are really excited. I'm really excited. Then this is definitely one of those situations to where once it gets close to like 2030, you said 2036. 2036, 2036. That's, that's how long that I mean, is and then, crazy well and then you know you just imagine too i'm sure they're going to extend it after oh, that yeah, just absolutely. because that, that's why you know i finally broke down i was always trying to be lenient because i love the rivalries like the iron bowl or you know you, you've got uh the cocktail Com- party yeah. you've got the you know the game Gamer. so yeah. just looking at all of the different rivalries there's a lot of really big ones and i always want to give them their their credit but i think the atmosphere and that, that's where i oh, i think man. i split it i think the games go to different rivalries. I don't think the game, the, the, the biggest rivalry game always goes to the, the Red River rivalry, but the Red River rivalry is the best atmosphere. And I don't think it matches up to any other because you split it down the, the middle. It's in the fairground and you can go on and on about it. So I'm extremely excited, really glad that they're keeping it there because there was speculation with them going to the SEC that they move it to an NFL stadium mm-hmm. or something like that. And it would probably be in Dallas at, uh, over at the Jerry's, Jerry's World. World. So uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm really excited that it's going to stay there because I think there's just so much history mm-hmm. and everything behind that stadium and that rivalry there. Just I'm giving you guys a word for advice. If you do get the opportunity to go there, make sure you look at the right side. Just, I don't want you to be that one guy wearing a red shirt, being stuck in a sea of orange, and uh, <laughs> have a really, really bad day. So, yeah, just just look, make sure you look at the right thing. But yeah, this rivalry is just second to none, in my opinion. Just, I'm really glad, Josh, as well, Josh. But what do we got next on the lineup here? Let's jump over to John Rom. Uh, so John Rom, John Ram. Uh, I think it's Rom. Uh, he goes to the LIV, the Live. Uh, so he's trying to live over the Live. Uh, he's leaving the PGA. We've talked about our frustrations with the live and just kind of where its money comes from. It feels like it's blood money and it, it, it brings excitement. So there's, there's a good and a bad to, to what the live is. I think when we talk about the, the live, uh, the live league, you know, whatever we want to call that, the, the, uh, you know, looking at it as a whole, I think there's a lot of good that comes from adding live golf to the, the whole the whole picture but you know it's just a little frustrating knowing where their money comes from it comes from uh, you know places that that you know it really goes against us as Americans and Blake and I know we've we've talked about that but you know just looking at it overall I think for the sport live is a good thing and so now we see John Rahm who uh, you know he was a guy who came from really just nobody and hits a hole in one that gets everybody excited and like wow you just did this on your first uh, big time tour and the first big time uh, stage that you're put on you do this and in front of Rory McIlroy of all of all guys so he does that wins the tournament uh, which was just totally unseen uh, and so you know seeing him uh, you know I, I think See, seeing him go over, I think that that's there's there's a lot that goes into this, and so I think 
uh, you know, w- with John Rahm, I think uh, you know and what I think I'm I'm mixing him up too. He's not the one that hit the hole in one. Uh, now I'm now I'm drawing a blank on who that was. Um, but you know, we, we talked we talk a lot about these guys. He he recently won uh, one of the PGA tours too, and I don't know why for some reason my brain is getting him mixed up with with someone else, and I can't think of who it is. Um, but he's he's still a big time golfer, been with the PGA for a long time, and and had some some a, a lot of great success. Now going over there for a deal of $300 million with the live. So that's one thing I think a lot of people, a lot of golfers are drawn into live because it just pays them more and it's more guaranteed money. Uh, what do you think about John Rahm going over there for $300 million? I understand $300 million is a stupid, a lot of money, but at the end of the day, I would still stick to my gut and still just stick with the PGA in this type of situation. Like you, you said it the best at the beginning, there was so much, there still is obviously a lot of backlash about the live compared to the PGA and this and that. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to be watching or not even necessarily watching, but I'll still watch the PGA, but I'll still I'll still support the PGA obviously more than I will with the live just because I, I don't necessarily like the fact, and I know a lot of people don't dealing with the blood money for what they mm-hmm. talked about in that kind of a situation. I don't think it's right, but yeah. And, and, yeah. And I, that's, that's where I kind of make the, you know, kind of draw the, the line, draw line is that saying. there is a good to it that it brings a new league bring right. something to the sport. And I think the new league itself is great for that. And I'm, I'm glad that these players are able to get guaranteed money. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just so hard to support the live when, when you know where it comes from and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, us as, as you know, red, red blooded Americans too, and seeing where we stand and where we draw the line in the sand. Uh, it's just hard to, to support that and, you know, love for your country. I think that comes above mm-hmm. everything when it comes to something like this. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you, if you, if you were to accuse me, of saying the opposite of what you just mentioned of a hard blooded red, redneck American country guy. I would flat out look at you in the face and I'd say a lot of words that I really can't say on the air right now. Um, but no, I mean, if, if you, if you're going to be going to the live, okay, you do you. But at the end of the day, if I had to speak for myself and on behalf of Josh, we're going to be sticking to what we know is rightfully right and what's rightfully ours. And we're going to be sticking with what's right and go to the PGA. And we're just going to stay there and not going to take anything. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, before we get too much further into the world of sports and everything that we're talking about, we do have something else we want to get to. But before we get there, I want to stop and talk about something that all of us need, and that is energy. We all absolutely need energy. Uh, and we really need the kind of energy that helps you stay on task and t- keep you on top of your game uh, day in and day out. And that's where Built Bar comes into play. Uh, Built Bars aren't your typical protein bars. They're nutritious, packed with protein. And Jeremy, guess what? They taste amazing. All right, mm. Built Bars are absolutely amazing. You can call it magic, but it's true. They've got a range of enticing flavors, an extremely wide range of enticing flavors, and constantly coming out with new flavors. They come out with seasonal flavors nonstop, so you have to keep be on top of your game to make sure you get your foot in the door for all of those. They've got flavors like salted caramel, coconut, cookies and cream, and guess what? They're all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's where... Built Bar comes into play where they're so much better. Whether you're working out, hiking, chasing after the kids, or if you're like us and you're podcasting, every once in a while you've got to get that Built Bar in your system. They're the perfect companion to keep you energized and satisfied without piling on the added sugars and sketchy additives that you might get in from some, something like even a candy bar. Uh, that's one thing that I, I suggest to people whenever they're trying to get themselves off of sweets. Use Built Bar. Built Bars taste amazing. They're they're protein, packed full of protein, uh, and they're amazing for you. Uh, they they don't drag you down the way you know they don't you don't have any kind of a sugar crash because it's all natural and it's all something that's going to give you better energy. Uh, so Built Bars are absolutely amazing. And for our loyal customers, we've got a great deal for you. You can go to Built.com and check them out and use our promo code RISING2, that is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, for 10% off. You'll get a whopping 10% off your order when you use code RISING2. That is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O at Built.com, B-U-I-L-T.com. So go ahead, unwrap your first Built Bar. Uh, or if you're a seasoned fan like us, you can try out a new flavor. Trust me, Built Bar, uh, you can fuel yourself up and it will be delicious. Check them out. Built.com. Use code rising two for 10% off. 
But Jeremy, it would be wrong of us not to mention this last thing. And I'm sad that uh, that Blake can't be with us to talk about this because it is his team. It is the Yankees signing Juan Soto. The Yankees sign Juan Soto uh, and they, they bring him in. That is an amazing trade to be able to pull him in. You add him to this this huge lineup. So just bringing up his 2023 stats, he had a 275 average. That's 39th in the league last year. 35 home runs. That's 14th in the league last year. And 109 RBI. That's tied for fourth in the league last year. You're talking a top 40 player in any individual category. And then on top of that, you know, they bring in exactly what type of player they wanted because they wanted a lefty outfielder. Yeah. And who better to go to go to than Juan Soto? He'll be in the mix of an outfield that's mixed with uh, Verdugo Grisham. You've got Aaron Judge and you've got Giancarlo Stanton. That is a star studded outfield. And I am extremely excited to see all of this come into fruition to see these guys play together. But how about this for the Yankees adding Juan Soto to their lineup? Wow. Yeah. I, oh, you can say is wow. Just because, like, just the, the, the list that you just rambled off, having that Aria stellar of a lineup and just adding, just, I mean, just it, adding, you know, him wa- to Aaron Judge. Yeah. Alone. It's, it's already one thing to have, like you said, Aaron Judge with his hitting capability and being able to produce bombs. Now you have another big cat like Juan Soto that can produce bombs and just keep bombing them out of the stadium this this bomb thing they might they might need to make a bomb button just because they keep saying <laughs> bombs and bombs and bombs but we need to make a, a yeah. sound clip of that yeah, bomb 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 <laughs> no literally this is definitely a really really big pickup for the new york yankees organization all i'm going to say is if new york and minnesota play each other in minneapolis you can definitely know where i am going to be <laughs> um no if if this might be a situation because we see Juan Soto launch a bomb down in target field and everyone says a target field throw the ball back. I might not throw the ball back. Um, no, but picking up Juan Soto, did they say his contract or anything for my, I didn't see anything. anything. Uh, I'm assuming he just carries over the like, contract since it's a trade. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I didn't know if they mm-hmm. worked something out or, but if this is going to be the time for the New York Yankees to bring everything to the table, Having this piece of the puzzle onto the puzzle, it, it could, all I'm going to say is good luck just because having this kind of a guy, which we've obviously talked about plenty and plenty of times throughout the MLB season, if you get this cat onto your plate and you can you can run with him, don't get into injury problems just because I know we've, we've talked about Juan Soto. He has been... He has acquired some injuries over the season just because he's one of those those rare players where you'll see him play both ways. He'll pitch and he will hit. He's not going to be one of those pinch runners that he's just going to be just just doing one or the other. This is this is one of those situations to where you have one of the best players, if not the best player in the MLB on your roster. Now, you got to keep him healthy and you got to. You got to make sure he's doing the right things. And looking at this situation, if Juan Soto plays the entire year, obviously I know they'll get the rotation factors in with the league like they always do. But if you get Juan Soto in for the entire year healthy, this New York Yankees organization it's going to be looking like old school New York Yankees where they're just going to be, they're going to be clean in house here is my opinion, Josh. And it's not like they were that far off last no, season. We no, knew no, that no, they no. just needed that one or two pieces to really fit this, this team together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's really exciting seeing that for them. And yeah. uh, I'm excited for Blake being able to watch his, his Yankees and see what they're able to do there, man. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I think this is a, a perfect addition and exactly what they were looking for. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, looking at Juan Soto, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not looking forward to the Red Sox playing the Yankees <laughs> next year because it's not going to be a, a, a sweep every time the way it has been this last season. Nope. So uh, it's going to be a really tough matchup, and the Yankees are going to be a very tough team 
they may have moved themselves up towards the top of favorites for the upcoming MLB season. So it's a lot of a lot of fun seeing that. And there's been some other moves in the MLB too that I'm going to have to catch up on because we've been so consumed in college football that it's been hard to keep up with that. So we're going to have to jump over there before we get to baseball season. But guys, that's all we've got for you today. We thank you all so much for joining in with us. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We've reached over 10,000 and it was before bowl season got here. So we thank you all so much. We started off at 5,000 at the beginning of this college football season. That is absolutely insane. So you guys have been a huge help to us. Keep on hitting that subscribe button. You can hit that like button. That also helps us greatly and comment down below. That helps us beat the algorithm. But uh, you can also check us out on podcast platforms. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can help us out by giving us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us over there. And follow us on social media. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. So go check us out over there. And guys, we thank you all so much for all of your love and support. And until next time.